Last episode, we were working on the head and the manifold. So now even the head is done and we touched the chambers even. And here's the intake manifold. It's all good and ready. Yes, it's looking really, really good now. And of course, next up is we port match the manifold into the head with a gasket that we made. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now it's all good because the pistons arrived and now we're balancing it. And we're going to have it pressed to the rods because here, look. The block is freshly honed and decked so we can check the ring caps and everything else. So let's check the ring caps and assemble the crank, shall we? Let's go! Here is the head all done up and we cleaned up the chamber. We didn't really reshape it, we just contoured it and removed all the sharp edges to make it an efficient chamber. This would help making good power or because our goal is 180, so hopefully you reach that. The exhaust port is finished and looking really, really good right now. And here you can see, we still cleaned up the chamber here. And also, of course, the valve job. And gotta give props to RDJ. Most of the time, we get the valve seals either Ferreira or Supertech from him, the Viton valve seals. Sometimes even ACL race bearings and Supertech valve train. So you guys can check out his page if you're local. Here's the head now, all assembled with the Supertech valve seals. It's gonna be really, really good, huh? Yep, you can see the intake ports is all good now. Yes, sir, yes, sir. That's a bit of dirt there, all right? Okay, and now we've also port matched the intake manifold. We, the gasket is based on the head itself, so now it's all perfect. And you can see it's supported all through and through from the runner entry all the way to the flange of the head or towards the head flange yes now it's all perfectly matched this is gonna be really really good hopefully it makes good power here it is now let's see all together yes and here's the opening of the runners or the runner entry and remember on the previous episode we talked about making this flow even better as good as we can to compensate for the lack of itr cam or the lack of cam because it's going to be itr and here we are balancing the ctr pistons yes and this is shilo actually on friday this past friday they made the they did the charity work that we donated the school stuff for kids you remember that yes now it's 319 grams identical all four so now let's go to the engine stand. As the block is back from the machine shop, here it is. As you can see here, the dark spot, that's just discoloration. Probably when it was on top dead and then there's humidity or condensation. Because as you can see on the hone marks, it's all perfectly even or consistent. So the machine shop would have told us, you know, if we needed an oversized pistons. But they said it's perfect and when we checked, it's also perfect with dial bar gauge and everything else. So here it is, so you can see the block is really, really fresh, right? And okay, now let me you guys show you a video of it. Look how fresh the block is. Let's look any closer. As you can see the dark spot, you can see it's still, hone, the hone marks are still going through it really good. So here, look at that. Really, really fresh. Oh, and the hone finish is really, really good. So this is gonna give us a superior ring seal hopefully really good performance right of course the magic number 180 all right yes it looks really clean here let's look at it closer again see the dark spot actually you actually don't feel it even with the micrometer uh, with a board gauge there, there it shows nothing so it's just discoloration maybe the surface rust got a bit deeper okay so now let's check on the ring gaps Okay, now, NPR, B16, standard bore, piston rings. But, wait, let me show you guys here. Let's bring the block to the desk. Something new now. Here it is. I mean, new because we don't usually show this on the desk here. This is a black box. This is a PCV crankcase ventilation system. And you can see Honda did really good because there's a, there's a hole hose that's close to the top which actually when the pcv system is working it pulls some vacuum in the valve cover so that's really good it's helping it alleviate pressure but since this since anton plans to track this or race this at the circuit we plan to we're gonna 
actually put an extra fitting here on the blank end remove the freeze plug or you know the plug we put this fitting here so now all we gotta do is you know tighten a, an aluminum fitting for the breather which hasn't arrived so we haven't put that here yet it's gonna be an 10 hose so it's gonna be this is gonna serve for daily driving or normal driving but this part here is gonna serve when you're on track so this actually means your crankcase ventilation is there for street and for track so this is gonna run do this two things so hey hopefully it helps pull good power right okay now let's go grab the rings and reset this block here now it's in a better position so you guys can see the bore better the npr piston rings we open this here wait oh wait i'm having a hard time moving let me cut it up okay so we got it open let's get num the number one ring the top ring first all right and of course we're gonna time lapse this so it doesn't take too long here we use a an itr piston or you can use any piston that you can as long as the same bore but this one is our IT, GDM ITR pistons, one of our spares, all right? Now here, we did check it with the filler gauge. We checked it with the 14, 15, 16. The 15 was a little bit loose, so we tried the 16, but the 16 still goes in, but it's a little tight. So we actually could call this 16, the ring gap. So because the ring gap is 16 on the top ring, we're going to file the second ring to be 0 0.018. So that's the target we're going to have. The ring gap is 16 on the first ring, 18 on the second. And so we'll check on the oil rings after all that. All right. So that's important to, to know the, that's how we do it. And of course, something I want to show you guys, because it's common that, you know, we're using some people use the use block without holding to be able to reliably check your ring gap if it's not honed or, or if it's surplus check it in between top dead and bottom dead this level here why because that's the fastest speed or that area is the fastest speed where the piston runs or that's the that's the fastest speed the piston gets on that area so that wears more so of course this one is honed we did check it before even having it honed but if you don't have a dial board gauge this is another way to check it you can check it with the ring gaps at the top dead position and of course at the middle like this and you can see it's still good so that's because before honing we made sure it's okay so that we don't waste money so now this is all good we go with the second ring and then now let's go to the stand Oh yeah, and let me just say this. I had noticed locally, they always insist on running tighter rings and whatnot, but they don't even hone the bore or they don't even check it with the dial gauge. So don't they know tighter ring gap is also more load? I mean, that makes the higher windage loss, like it's harder to turn the, the crank. So that eats up horsepower. Maybe they, that's why they're they don't make power, right? Okay, now here we have the block of the engine stand and look at that, it's so clean, right? This didn't even have like a hot tank or ultrasonic, it was just all clean. Well taken care of. All right, now we install the oil jet or oil thrower because of course there's still factory pistons. So we can't really you know, eliminate this. Okay, we tighten it properly. Of course, we're just keeping it snug right now, but we're gonna tighten it properly. All right, now the bearings, we drop it in. All right, and then assembly lube and then the crank. Yes, okay, now let me show you. This crank was not even micro polished, but look at those journals. That's super clean. That's because it ran good and clean oil. Okay, now assembly lube on the journals and then the main caps. Oh, wait, the thrust washers grew side out. All right, now the rest of the main caps. Okay, we keep this hand tight. This actually, you know, the pistons we sent it, we sent the rods to be pressed on the pistons. Then we forgot that the rods need to be narrowed on the small end whenever you're running a type r piston so we actually wanted to install the pistons on this episode but we couldn't it's still in the machine shop 
Okay, now step one. It's 18 feet pounds torque. So we won't time lapse this because it won't take too long. Plus, you know, we gotta hear the clicking sound. Wait, wrong socket. Sorry about that. That was a 15. My bad, my bad. Okay, this time it's for real. Size 14, all right? Okay, first step is 18 feet pounds torque. Oh, yeah, clicking good. All right. Because it's just 18, it's, gonna, it's not going to take too long, so we don't need to time lapse this. All right. This is the first step is actually to keep everything snug. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Final step is 56 feet pound torque. So now this is going to click really loud. All right, it's going to be so cool. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then we time lapse the rest because it's gonna take too long, all right? So now this is on assembly loop, so it's gonna turn not as light, so let's try it. Hmm. Hopefully it's light, let's turn it. Oh yeah, whoa. And this is on assembly loop, so imagine if it's just engine oil or motor oil. Oh yeah, this spins nicely, even on assembly loop. This is perfect, this is what I like. Yes sir, yes sir. New bearings and all, and it still spins light because that's because the crank is pretty good and it's, you know everything is in good condition when we assemble it, disassemble it. So now let's turn it like this. This way the assembly doesn't drip off onto the board, just like Jay Meager of Real Street Performance suggested. You gotta wipe that before you install the pistons. But now it's needing the pistons and rods installed because the ring caps are all good now, so we can assemble that as soon as the set arrives from the machine shop yes sir yes sir so now let's have a look at the intake manifold here looking really good this is the fight this is the final status it's all finished it's all done it's ready to be welded and the reason why i like showing this is because once it's welded we're no longer gonna see this plus oh yeah you can see the velocity stack on runner number one plus this is gonna make or break our goal or the build well, no, it's not going to break it, but hey, if it reaches 180 wheel horsepower, a lot of it came because of this intake manifold. For the ported IDR, let's look at this. Yes, it's perfectly port matched. And we're going to have a video about port matching of the head, of the manifold onto the head. We'll have it ready soon. And we use this head and the manifold, this manifold as the example or as candidate for the content on that so we have that right look at this size good oh yeah velocity stack right there yep so as soon as the pistons arrive we're gonna check it check everything that we can because the piston rings are all good we're gonna assemble it and of course we're gonna drop the pistons have everything ready because the head is assembled and it's done so as soon as that's ready you know you can just click it right here